Here we are, State Wars Hockey Podcast, episode number 51. Coming to you straight from Long Island, New York. Tim McManus here with Greg Thompson. We are in the same spot, but on different floors right now, so we don't uh, talk over each other. Um, what's going on, GT? Nothing, Tim. You know, it's it's been a couple of crazy weeks in a row, you know, so it's nice to get back to the office and kind of kind of uh, recap the, the two weekends and um, just kind of a little time to breathe for us, you know what I mean, until the uh, – SummerSlam tournament comes up. We'll be, we'll be hectic starting probably next week, you know, with the craziness. So it's nice to just sit back, look look back at the events, look at some old, some pictures, and um, you know, get stuff ready for for SummerSlam. So what's going on over there? Yeah, not much. Just you know, uh, I'm I'm still going blind. So I put my glasses on today, so I feel like Mr. Magoo right now. So I've got my glass, my five dollar uh, CVS glasses on right now, so I could see. So just getting older and blinder, which sucks. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, two crazy weekends in a row we had. So normally, you know, I do a better job of spreading things out. But with COVID, it kind of screwed up everyone's schedules this last year, year and a half. So yeah. we had back-to-back California, Winter Wars West, which was awesome, and Corona and Irvine. And next week, we'll recap that one. Um, and then this week, uh, we just got back from Chicago where we had Midwest Wars, which was, you know, awesome event, packed crazy you know teams from everywhere out there michigan teams missouri teams illinois teams wisconsin teams tennessee um ohio um just uh you know people from all over the place uh coming out to play it was great and uh you know we got our buddy uh griffin kluzek on today so that's why we decided to do the midwest recap today while we have him on i'm going to talk to him a little bit and um yeah just uh two fun weekends so excited to uh recap those Move towards uh, East Coast SummerSlam, like you mentioned, first weekend of June, June 4th to 6th in uh, Feasterville at the Sportsplex with some games overflow being played over at Marple. So if anyone's still trying to get in there, we're going to be starting the schedule the next day or two. So still have time to get in for that. And then after that, it's the big dance. State Wars, July 20th to August 2nd, St. Peter's RecPlex, St. Peter's, Missouri, Greg. And um, I'm expecting that to be a 300 plus team tournament. We already have over 100 teams already registered, and the deadline's coming up June 1st. So uh, a lot of teams scrambling to get registered, but it's going to be a big one. Yeah, you know me. I love going back to St. Louis. Um, you know, the rinks there are, are incredible. The local area is awesome. Um, you got the casinos. You got the main streets. You got the great hotels, the restaurants, you know, and the facilities are just unbelievable. So, yeah, looking forward to getting back to St. Louis. It's been a couple of years for me. I think the last time I was there was, oh, it must have been tryouts in uh, 19, correct? Yeah, 19 probably. But uh, yeah, looking forward to it. My old stomping grounds, Tim. Oh, yeah. No, it's a great spot. We love being there. Um, like you said, three NHL rinks, um, basically on the one roof, the one building's right in front of the other one right there. Um, NHL size, air conditioned. Um, we're going to have, you know, three brand new uh, Mataflex floors on all three rinks there in the building, which is pretty sick. Um, we don't have much people. What? Still mat floors, correct? what I say? I think you said Mataflex. Did I say Mataflex? I'm sorry. Still mat floors. Uh, that's what getting rid of the, getting rid of the old, bringing in the new, the still mat floors, best floor in roller hockey. I know a lot of people love them at the Coliseum on the main rink at State Wars last year. So all three rinks at the RecPlex were planning on having the still mat floors brand new on down there. And actually all American, which is one of the rinks to do overflow. They have a brand new still mat floor coming in for their rink. Um, so that'll be down there as well. So um, it's going to be exciting stuff for that. And uh, you know, people love Missouri. People love that event in Missouri. And we have so many Missouri teams already signed up. It's just going to be a really competitive fun tournament. And you know how it is, you know, a lot of tournaments, you play a lot of local teams. It's, it's, you know, State Wars is a chance to play against teams from all around the country. And we actually heard today from some international teams. We got teams from Argentina playing on coming out. We got some teams from Switzerland playing on coming out. And now we got a couple of good emails from some of our Canadian buddies in Ontario, still hopeful that that board is going to get opened up by middle of June and asking if we can extend the deadline for them because the terms doesn't start till July 20th. So they feel really confident they're going to be able to get in. So hopefully we'll have some Canadian uh, flavor at the tournament as well. Um, so real excited for that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I do think the border is going to be open, uh, you know, fingers crossed, um, you know, stuff I've been reading and hearing and 
all that stuff with the vaccines here in the U United States going. Um, I feel like more and more things are opening up. So fingers crossed, Tim. Hoping to see our Canadian friends um, this summer at State Wars. So that, that would be awesome. Um, but uh, yeah, three fresh floors, like you said. Can't wait to skate. Um, you know, honestly, I, I it was like ice, you know, over the summer on that main floor. So pretty sweet and uh, looking forward to that one for sure. You know, when my old legs feel fast on a floor, you know, it's a fast floor. Um, that floor, yeah. uh, I felt like I was on ice out there on that floor. And, and what's amazing about the still mat floor, I find, is you don't even think about slipping. So you're going hard at full speed and turning and stopping and cutting and whatever. And you're not even thinking about it, so, which is so nice. But most floors, you kind of you kind of stride a certain way, knowing you're going to get a little bit of slip and you don't want to go, you know, hurt yourself or whatever there. I feel like you just go. Um, so excited for that. And yeah, you know, in, in Midwest Wars this week, you know, we want to thank both facilities, Mount Prospect and uh, Salt Creek for having us. You know, that Salt Creek facility, Greg, is one of my favorites in the country. It's, it's arguably the nicest one sheet rink in the country. You know, we had IIHF tryouts there in 2017. So it was our home for 10 days. So thank you to Nick and Chris and everyone, Joe, uh, the maintenance, who does an amazing job keeping that place clean out there. We thank those yeah. guys. And, um, you know, it was also at Midwest Wars. We have so many friends out there in that area. So a big shout out to some of our state directors who were actually able to be there to come together. So we had uh, Peter Dale, our Wisconsin state director, Rob Farrar, our Missouri state director, Matt Koleski, our Michigan state director, and Dan Costanza, our Illinois state director, all there together, which is yeah. pretty awesome. Um, and then we had so many other people there, like, you know, our boy Ziggy Ziegler from Missouri. He brought out a ton of teams, the chaos group that all came out and played and, um, you know, yep. so many Jeremy others. So. With, uh, Jeremy Bruce and um, yeah, Jeremy Bruce, the Gremlins. They had a ton of teams out there, a lot of younger teams. So that's awesome. They're doing a lot of stuff out of Veta Sports, yeah. which will be one of the other rinks we bring uh, games to. It's our first overflow rink. It's only about 15 minutes from the Recplex, so we'll play games over at Veta Sports, which used to be Madison Square Garden. For those that uh, don't know, but that rink's right there. But yeah, I mean. The Midwest has always been great to us. I mean, every year of State Wars for 17 years, we've had that event in the Midwest. So we have so many friends out there. You know, uh, Mike Tillotson says hello. It was great seeing Mike as well. Uh, mm -hmm. Slimmer, fitter Mike Tillotson. Like he lost about 100 pounds. Um, he looked great. We saw him there. His son, Hunter, just had his 21st birthday. He played great um, out in the tournament. It was great seeing them. And, um, you know, like I said, we have so many friends out in the Midwest of all the years um, of being out there. So it was great to be there. Um, what were your favorite uniforms of the week, Greg? I mean, we, there were so many good ones out there. Yeah, so mine were actually the, the Palmer ones. The, uh, with the, the, the gray ones. ones? Yeah, the, the gray ones. They had like the, um, it was like a kind of like a backdrop gray in it. And it was like kind of streaky looking and faded. I just really liked those. But I did like the all black farm tough ones with the numbers up in here. Oh, yeah, you like that, yeah. I like that. It was a clean look. Really liked it. Yeah, I love both of those. I mean, I'm biased. You know, I I, I helped design and, and make uh, our, our jersey brand, Empire Sportwear, made the, the Border Cat jerseys and pants this year. Yeah, me too. So I love those, just how clean they look together. They, they flowed. Um, I love those jerseys. And, and you know, those, those Gremlin jerseys are pretty cool too. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, as an 80s kid, love seeing those Gremlins. So a lot of good uniforms. And that's, you know, Obviously, the traditional State Wars is still the best when everyone has matching brand new uniforms from us that everything was the same. But it does has a cool flavor, too. We'll see this summer to see what kind of cool uniforms teams yeah. come up with. And um, anyone that's needing jerseys and pants, you know, Empire Sportwear, like I mentioned, we're doing discounted uniforms for our uh, State Wars teams. And I probably have designed and made about 40 different uh, team jerseys already. we got about 15 in production right now. They're doing a great job with them. And we're keeping the prices down for everyone, which is most important to get them high quality stuff. So anyone interested in that, let us know, because it's still about a four week turnaround to get them. So we're getting close to that date where we don't want to risk stuff not getting there in time for state wars. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, now. what's that? So get your orders in now. So you have them in time. Yeah, 100 percent. Because, you know, a lot of guys, I mean, even Dan Costanza, his Golden Knight stuff arrived on Friday and, you know, Nowadays, people don't know with the pandemic still going on, the shipping world has just been a mess. So getting things, if they say three weeks, it may take six weeks, you know? Um, yeah. So you really got to give yourself that leeway to get stuff ordered. You know, too many of us, and I've been guilty of this before too, you order stuff and you want to get there that day, you're about to start and 
it doesn't work out and it definitely doesn't work out during this pandemic. So I would make sure that you guys, uh, anyone that's ordering, not even just from us, from anyone, make sure you give yourself some cushions. So you're not waiting by the mailbox on uh, the day before your the state wars division starts because uh, you might be an unhappy camper. Yeah, so true. So what do you want to do? You want to bring Griffin in now? Or you want to do a little re recap of the tournament? Go through that. I guess, that I guess we'll bring Griffin. If I know Griff, he's probably got his skates on. He may even have his helmet on. He's uh, pacing back and forth in the waiting room right now, waiting to get on here. Um, so I think, uh, I think we'll bring the, the Griffster on. There he is. What's up? What's up, Griff? Not much. What, what about you guys? Ah, you wearing your skates right now, Griff? Sadly not. Okay, figured you'd have the skates on. I see. I see a lot of State Wars medals and pictures in the background. Did you did you set those up for the for the podcast? Are those always up there? No, they're always up there. All right, those look good, Greg. A lot of silver medals up there. Yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah, they're looking good. Some old old pictures, Griff. That's awesome. Yep. And yeah, a lot of silver, like Tim said. <laughs> So, so Griff, it was great seeing you last week. You know, those who don't know, uh, if, if you live under a rock, you don't know who this guy is. Uh, Griffin Kluzak, Illinois 2003 player. Um, was that Midwest Wars, big help to us out at the tournament. And what I realized, Greg, during that tournament is this guy may know more about the history of roller hockey and little, like, I don't want to call trivial stuff, but if there was a trivial pursuit of the sport of roller hockey, I want this guy on my team. Yeah, but it was only the last, what, six years, Griff, you say? 2015 and up? So, like, 2015 to now, I'm perfect, but I think I could go back to 2010 and be decent. Wow, okay. All right. I know yeah. him and Fox were having a, a showdown, um, you know, towards the end of the tournament before we left, and they were quizzing each other on, on certain little things, and Griff, Griff was pretty good, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, I'm not sure if Griff's ready for the Palma Pro Division as a player yet, but he's definitely ready for the Palma Pro of Trivial Pursuit of roller hockey, for sure. He'd be a captain. Thank you. <laughs> did, you have a, did you have a couple of questions for Griff, Greg, to try to stump him right off the bat? Um, I got one right now, I guess. Um, so you were part of the Alkali team in 2015, right? I, you know, that, that first year we asked, um, for players who are interested to like younger players to see if they're interested in doing like, um, you know, a water boy top type, uh, stick, stick boy. Um, and you got selected for, for alkali, correct? I got picked for three teams. Oh, that's what I heard. And, and you chose alkali. Well, I, I asked to be alkali stick boy before. So someone chose for me. Okay. So that year, obviously, was a memorable year. Um, and 2015, they, they ended up finishing second, uh, mm -hmm. losing in the finals. Can you name every player on that roster? Alkalis? Without looking at, at the internet, internet right now. Yeah, I could, I think. Both goalies were Brett Humes and Zach Lane. And yeah. then Tyler Spezia, Travis Snow, Kyle Novak. Corey Kettler, Daniel Illinois, Cody Keller, Jalen Krogman, uh, oh my, JP Lemoya, and Bryson Johnson. Close. All nine. You're missing one guy. How many of that? Eight. What year is that, Greg? Fifteen. Did I say Cody Kettler? You did. You said both Kettlers. Are you getting a little help from um, from mom? No, no one's around me. Hmm. He's yeah, up. you got everyone else. Give him, give him, give him a first and last initial. Well, he's from New York. Jesse Petito, he didn't play. Oh, he didn't play. No, he didn't. He didn't show up. Or Joe benched him. He didn't show up. Oh, okay, all right, that doesn't count. I give, I give that to Griff then. Wow, because I remember he was at Narch, I think, with them. Um. But uh, he's on the roster, so I don't know. He, and he was leading the team in assists. Kyle Novak wore his number. Ah, that's why right. Novak has no points. All right, I, I, got a, I got a good one for you, Griff. 
So you started playing at State Wars in 2011 was your first year. 2010, goalie first year. Well, I, I told Tim that you were a goalie, yeah. Okay, well, the first – I guess your name was spelt different because you're not, you're not showing up on the Griffin Kluzak uh, in 2010. It shows up 2011 as your first year on here. He was on the Griff, Tim. <laughs> I, I think it was, doesn't show up because I was a goalie. No, it, it, it goes by name. And point streak that we used to use is very case sensitive. So something must be spelled dif- differently with your name for not to come up. But that doesn't matter because you didn't, you didn't score any goals in the, the first couple of years as a skater. So I know you didn't score one as a goalie. So – Look at, looking at your stats here, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014, in 16 games played, you have zero goals scored, okay? Yep. You, didn't, you, didn't, you, didn't, you weren't lighting the lamp like you were this past weekend in Midwest Wars back then. You had an assist though in 2014, okay? So you, you, you weren't necessarily a Travis Snow in this division. Now, in 2015... You had three goals and an assist, four points in your four games. You finally got on the score sheet that year. What team did you score your first ever State Wars goal against? You, said you, every stupid stat about, you know every stupid stat about everybody else. You should know this about yourself. It was either Colorado or Missouri, I think. Well, I'm going to go with Missouri. Teams in the division. It was either Colorado or Missouri. You're going to go with Missouri? Yeah. I'm going to say maybe go with the other team. Colorado? Yep, Colorado. First game out, you netted one. And then three years later, 2017, seven goals, four assists, 11 points for Griff. Um, Pretty impressive year that year. So, what's that? Any more stats for him? No, I'm going to share a picture with him right now here we found. Um, let me pull it up here. So, okay, Griff, while set. while we have a quick, what, what is your favorite rink to play on? Like, a, you know, during State Wars, you know, over the years, what, what what's been your favorite rink? Well, if the Coliseum counts, def- definitely the Coliseum. But like facility, I'd say probably Taylor Sportsplex or Missouri. Okay. All right. Is that is that a little Griffin? That's Griff his first year skating out. So 2011 on Team Mission that year. Mouthpiece in. You guys, you guys lost the to tour in the final, correct? We didn't make it to the final that year. Oh, you didn't? Because I know one year the mission and tour met up. Um, that was Cincinnati, right, Tim? 2011, yeah, Cincinnati. Who, who was your coach? Travis Bokina. <laughs> okay. You bags. All right. Awesome. So we got some other pictures as well, Griff, I'm going to share from over the years. Here's a, little, here's a young Griffin Kluzek right, right there. So that's why I like oh, it. More, a little more clean shaven on the, on the hair there, Griff. Yeah, I'm not sure what was going on then. Yeah, you weren't wearing alkali back then. Well, let Joe Cook see these pictures. Had Good. stock street hockey wheels on even. <laughs> I wonder why you were slipping. There you go with the alkali stuff. There we go. Now, this was at Joe Dumars in Detroit in 17 when we had some uh, some games over there. One thing about Griff, he's always smiling, Joe. Greg. That's one thing I love about him. He plays the game. He loves the game. Always got a smile on his face. I wonder if this was a goal. That was definitely a shot from Griff. Playing Looks against United Kingdom. Looks like the puck's going in. Griff is one. I know you love. I know you love State Wars, and and you could probably name a hundred things you love about it. But is one of your favorite things something like that where you're playing against United Kingdom and a lot of teams you never see anywhere else? Yeah, definitely. It's something like that's very unique in the sport. That the first time I did it, it never happened. It was so cool, and <laughs> like even talking to those kids, they were so like nice in the game. Right. That's awesome. And now, some Greg, of those were pretty good too. Yeah, they were they were getting really good. But... You know, unfortunately, we haven't seen them the last couple of years because of COVID, but uh, hopefully they'll be back and uh, better than ever next year. You know, Greg, one of the things I love with Griffin, he's honestly one of those stories that you talk about. You know, everyone, everyone's under the assumption in roller hockey for whatever reason. And I'm going to give a couple of examples of it, but everyone's under the assumption that 
everyone that's good just was really good right off the bat, right? I mean, teams get mercyed or they struggle and they get frustrated, right? Or a kid just – guy has a son out there and he's not tearing up right away. He, you know, they get kind of, you know, upset or, you know, they get down on it. Um, and people, you know, aren't realistic knowing that it doesn't always work that way with everyone, you know. And I think Griffin – is a great example of just hard work and determination because, you know, we talked about his stats there at the beginning, obviously, you know, he wasn't winning any awards those first year with those stats, but he loved the game comes from a good support system in his family, that rink. He's probably on that rink more than, you know, the Zamboni is, um, yeah, yeah. you know, he's always on that rink. I know we did when we had world championships there, uh, excuse me, uh, world uh, camp there for tryouts. He was on the rink when we got there in the morning. He was on there in between sessions. He was on there when we left. So no one wanted to work hard and be better than this guy. And I got to be honest, watching this last week at Midwest Wars, I was really impressed with him. Um, he could score goals, and he's gotten a million times better than what the kid I remember that we were just watching in some of those pictures. Yeah, Griff definitely stepped up his game the last couple of years. And, you know, he uh... – he was definitely lights out over the weekend. I know they had a short bench. He was tired, but he still played unbelievable and scored some big goals. And his hands are definitely getting better. His shot's definitely better. You know, and, he, and he's like 6'5". How, how big are you right now, Griff? Uh, I think I'm like 6'1". Yeah, Around he, maybe 6'2 now. But def, definitely uh, becoming a, a great player in the sport. Yeah, thank you. With those skates on, those wheels, you're about six five, and the and with the afro, whatever you call, he's got there. You take you let his you let that take that hat off. He's probably six seven. Um, there you go. There. You got birds in there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny that like, we talk about that. You know, the one of the, one of the frustrating parts to me at Midwest Wars, Greg, was there were a lot of mercies early in the tournament, and it happens in tournaments like that where you don't have enough teams. Like in California, we had enough where we we separated most of the youth divisions from the get go. So we had a double A and an A and all the games were great. Yeah. Meanwhile, in Midwest Wars, we really didn't have a lot of them in each division, like six teams in a division. So we couldn't have two separate. So unfortunately, a lot of teams get bounced around a little bit in the round robin. And there were a couple that honestly were just so new that there really was no saving them, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but then the playoffs came in on Sunday. Looking at the scores, it was night and day. But I was Where talking to Peter Dale about it who, you know, he has his farm tough program and they had a million teams there and he had some newer teams that struggled. And we talked a little bit about the frustrations of that, you know, whether it's the kids or the parents or himself, you know, what do you do for these kids? And I, and I sent him a text later on that night. I was looking through some old stats, Griff. So the first year that his older guys, Max Montez, Tyler Dale, like all those kids that were tearing up the tournament, when they played their first year in 2003s, and I think it was in 2014, I believe, this was their record, Griff. They were 0-4 in the tournament, five goals for, 30 against. Okay? So they got beat up pretty good. And I looked at the roster. It's Zach Wolverton. It's Tyler Dale. It's Max Montez. It's all the same great players in Wisconsin now. And I said to Peter, I go, credit to these kids and to your coaching and the program that these kids didn't give up then. They kept playing, Greg. And now they're the ones putting those whoopings on other teams. Um, yeah. and not everyone's going to go that night and day, but you can't get frustrated. You come out, it's something new. It's like going skiing. I learned how to ski at a late age. I'm falling all over the place. And now I could ski, right? You go golfing. You don't, you can't play golf. You got to practice and roller hockey is the same thing. And I think too many people think it's going to be, you know, right away, you're going to be great. And I know Greg, you have stories from when you were young and going to tournaments in New Jersey and getting mercy at every game. So it happens and everyone's just got to work hard like Griff here or like the Wisconsin kids and just keep battling and you can get it, but it, you got to put the time in. Yeah, to I totally agree with you there. I mean, I remember those early days, you know, a lot of the Wisconsin teams were kind of, you know, on the other side of things, you know, compared to what they are now. And now, I mean, especially that team, uh, you know, the 0304 is they're just so fun to watch, you know, just the talent level on the rink and, the passing and, and the hands. I mean, they've, they've definitely turned the full one that, uh, uh, 180 and, uh, just incredible to see. I mean, like you said, kids start working hard and, uh, sticking to it and they're going to get better. So. Yeah. Really those, kids, 
Those kids are tough to play. We were on the wrong end of a mercy against them in the 18U championship. Yeah, they're good. Sure. They play very well together. It shows that they've stuck together and kept playing. You know, one of the other one of the best parts for Midwest for us and me, Greg, is you know, people at home, if you notice the the photos okay. that we had for this tournament. So we brought in a guy, Ross Detman, who I know from many years ago. He lives in Illinois, and I reached out on a whim and just said, Hey. Ross, anyway, you know a photographer for the weekend? We need a guy. And he was like, I'm available. And I was like, what? Um, so we got Ross to come down. And Griff, you got to meet Ross a little bit. And you know, this guy, talk about Hall of Fame. He's in the Hall of Fame of photographers. I mean, he's, he's shot multiple, multiple Stanley Cups, World Series, Stanley Cup, uh, Super Bowls, Frozen Four. He's 25 years, I think, the Chicago Wolves home game photographer, AHL team out in Illinois tons of magazine ads and whatnot. He's won an Emmy or two before as a photographer. And he came out and just raised the bar big time for what we've had at our tournaments. And anyone hasn't checked him out yet. There's a lot on Instagram, but we put a boatload uh, this week on uh, Facebook. I think Greg, you uploaded a hundred pictures yesterday and you got about 900 more. Yeah. Um, but the photos were just incredible and excited to announce. I just talked to him yesterday, Griffin. He's going to come out and work the Palma Pro Division this summer and do all the photography for the Palma Pro, set up a goal cam and do a lot of cool things that's going to just raise the level at Palma Pro even more. Yeah, the pictures yeah. were great this weekend. Yeah, you got uh, a couple. That's Griffey show, Greg. Right? That, uh, that was a raw shot of Gre Griffin, the, uh, the, 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 fish the Flow City Greasers uh, jersey there. Yeah. It's a great shot of Griff right there with his Griff pants. Hey, before we get into the tournament, we'll talk about Griff hockey there. So, Got the stick there, got the pants on there. I know you're wearing the shirt. You probably got some Griff boxer shorts on right now. Um, talk a little about them. I'm, you know, excited. Hopefully, I think Griff Hockey is going to be a sponsor at State Wars this summer. And, uh, you know, you got you got Warrior, you got Bauer, you got that CC, whatever that stupid company is that doesn't support roller hockey. Take them out of it. And then you got Griff Hockey now. Um, talk a little bit about what you're doing with Griff Hockey and the sticks. Yeah, so this January, I – wanted to start my own business and I had a couple of ideas and then this starting my own stick brand is actually what I ended up choosing to do and when I was looking at it I got my first I started ordering samples from China to like pick what kind of stick I want to make and I um, ordered a few and didn't like the first ones I got and then I eventually got my favorite one that's what the Griff stick is now and now it's a 375 gram stick made of 18k carbon fiber and it's i would say it's easily the best stick on the market if you used it <laughs> it's a bold there statement there griff i like it though it's like you're in the shark tank right now griff people might say like they think the bowers better because it's a big name but they're the real deal for sure you know so I think it's Steve Jobs or Bill Gates working out of their uh, their garage starting their companies when I think of Griff here and that little room right there coming up with these designs with sticks. Pretty impressive that kid's still in high school, Greg. He's, you know, probably during the pandemic, you got more downtime. You're thinking a lot. You want to start a business. He loves the sport, goes out, builds a stick. And, you know, it was a real thing. Like we saw it this weekend. People were using it. He's got his gear on. And then he goes out there and snipes a bunch with it, which is the best advertisement for that stick, I would think. I'd say so. Go ahead, Greg. Yeah, I'd say this weekend is probably all in a stick. N none in me. It's just <laughs> just because I had the stick, I think. Yeah, didn't you get high score in the 18U division, Griff? I did. There you go. There you go. So when, when you're talking about your stick to other people, you know, what? how do you get them to buy your stick and not others? Is it the price point? Is it the, the style, the look? I'd say definitely the price point. And if I have the chance to let them try it, I'll always let them try it because I know they'll be set satisfied with the performance. But the price point is at about like half of what a Bauer or a CCM stick would be coming at uh, 160 with no warranty and $180 with the warranty. Right, but I think pretty... what's the warranty on it? 30 days? 30 days, yep. Okay. But I think the best part that I want more people to see and more people to try it is definitely the performance of it because the slight weight and has a great blade too is probably the best part of it the blade okay. okay 
Um, now, are you in any uh, any stores, any pro shops? Are you selling online? Where can people, you know, get the stick? Do you have any sales reps, or is it just you, one man show? Well, the place that people will be able to get them will be GriffHockey.com, which is going to be launched sometime either this week or next week. So nice. that's definitely the place to get them. Okay, awesome. And how many different curbs and options do you have? I have two different flex options, but both senior flexes and then PD80 or G88, G92 and G28 curves. But I'm going to start doing junior and intermediate flexes soon. I just ordered some of like my very first of those size sticks. That's great. And then, now, I, have I, a, I, then I have a mid kick option and a low kick option. Okay. Now, how did you get the idea of, you know, starting your own brand, your own stick, stick business? Well, I originally wanted to start like a stick website that was just a stick store, but then uh, Joe Cook gave me the idea that I should do a stick brand because I didn't have the, the startup money I need to start a pro shop. So I have this idea. And then once I started to do it and actually got a stick that I loved is when I really fell in love with doing this, making this business. Are you going to expand it all to any other products you think or? Uh, I'm not sure. I think I will, but I'm not entirely sure what kind of products I'll do. If I can find like quality products that I like to do and I'm passionate about, then I definitely would. Yeah, start out with this one, see how it goes, right? Hopefully at State Wars this summer, you get some good press, right? You'll get a chance to showcase to people from all around the country and hopefully different parts of the world and uh, see how it goes, right? Yep, for sure. That's awesome. And like I said, you were sniping this weekend, so I don't know if it was the player or the stick, but... I don't remember seeing you shoot like that before. So I'm going to give the stick a little credit for that. Yeah. I, I think it definitely goes to the stick too. <laughs> that last picture Greg showed that Ross took, I that, that, think that's a good picture for one of your ads too. It's perfect. Perfect shot of the stick there, Greg. That's uh, that's a good Griff hockey's ad right there. Yeah. yeah. Definitely going to have to use it. <laughs> All right. So let's, oh, let's jump in here a little bit. Griff, you, you want to stay on a little bit with this while we talk about these divisions a little bit? Yeah, I'd love to. All right. I like to get Griffin's input on, uh, you know, some of the, the teams coming up in the, in the you know, in the, the youth teams and what teams kind of stood out to him or players. And um, so, yeah, I might as well ask you now, Griff, you know, what teams really stood out to you? Um, any players in particular kind of, you know, you're like, oh, my God, this kid's going to be a stud or or is one. Yeah, I think uh, some of the great teams were that uh, JYD 12 youth team I think that they were pretty good IRHL 12 of those 09s are probably the best 09s in the country um there was a really good game between IRHL 10U and one I think they had two teams but Farm Tough 10U in the championship both of the, those teams are really good and will probably be some of the better teams coming up this year a couple good players Ryan Costanza was really good um uh, the 06 Adrian Wisniewski, who played up on my 18U team, who played 14U, 16U, and 18U, he's also really good too. Someone to look out for. Yeah, I agree there. Um, you really got to start remembering some of these younger kids' names, you know, from some other teams now, so we can start quizzing you on those. Yeah, I, I had to get a bit better, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Any younger farm tough kids that, that really impressed you? I don't know any of the names, but they had some good players. Okay. Any other Michigan or Missouri or? Well, Even obviously. I'm not real good with like players like 14 you on there, but like in 16 you like, obviously all those farm tough O fours were pretty good. Some of those car shield kids were good on that 16 you team. There's a lot of good teams, even though farm tough kind of had their way in that division. Yeah. But definitely a lot of good players out there. I'm just not great with those names. Yeah. All right, Greg, let's jump in here a little bit. Let's start going through these divisions a little bit. Um, so six and under was a uh, four-team division, Farm Tough, IRHL, Pamela Beta, Golden Knights, white and black. It's a big mouthful there. And um, the Gremlins from Missouri came out. So it was great. We had four teams, three different states represented there. Teams, we can't wait to see uh, that sixth on the division at State Wars, which is, you know, the future of the sport. Farm Tough went 3-0 and through the round robin and uh, 
wound up getting a bye right to the final. And um, they, in that championship game, they, no shocker, they won again in the double A 6U, defeating RHL, the Beta Golden Knights, White, 6 to 2 in that game. Um, yeah. And the MVP was uh, Brookston Hasbergen. Yep. Brookston, he, uh, he tore it up there. I think yeah. he had uh, one, two, four goals in that championship game. Um, and then the other two teams, how we did it was we had split it six U, it split into two different divisions. And um, the other one was the Gremlins playing against uh, Black. And in that one, uh, another great game. Um, two Hopefully that games. was the best game of the tournament, I heard. Yeah, it went to overtime. And Gremlins wound up winning that game. I heard their goaltender played awesome in that game, by the way. Foxy was working that rink and texted over how great this goalie's playing. But the Gremlins wound up winning that game three to two to take on the 6U A Division Championship. And I know uh, Camden Hibbler scored the game winner. I think he tied the game pretty late. And then he won the game winner uh, in overtime for them. Yeah, and the MVP was the goalie, Jackson Gruntman. I guess, he, like you said, he stood on his head and the refs were like, wow, there was, there was no way they were winning this game without him. So he was the, the true MVP, I guess, of, of the weekend for them. Imagine that kid this summer, Greg, in the smaller nets with 6U. He's covering yeah. that much net in the uh, with the bigger nets playing that well. Excited to see him play. You know, we got some really good 6U teams coming to State Wars, you know, from other parts of the country. Um, we got a strong New York Snipers team we know coming out. And then, um, you know, Michigan always has a, a strong team coming out, possibly, you know, California team. You know, it's going to be a good 6U division, so it's going to be great to see some of these teams playing again on the big rink, nhl size rink with those smaller nets. Then let's move yeah. over to the 8U division. 8 and under was a five-team division. And in that one, uh, we had the uh, the Golden Knights. Farm Tough had a couple teams. It's kind of funny. They call their teams by different animal names now, Greg. So we had the Pigs and the Sheep playing Griff in that division. And the Gremlins and uh, IRHL uh, Golden Knights White. They went 3-0-1 in the round robin play. Did pretty well. Um, they tied the Gremlins during it. I'm sorry, they were 3-0-1. Yeah, 3-0-1. And, and, um, but that was a pretty tough division. Farm tough. Pigs went 3-1. and one, Gremlins went 2-1-1. One and one. So it was a pretty tough one there. And then uh, getting to the championship, the IRHL uh, Golden Knights white team um, defeated the farm tough Pigs 5-0 in the AA championship. Yeah, the, the white team played great over the weekend. And it's crazy. I mean, the Gremlins tied them in round robin, and they moved down to the eight and under uh, A final. So, right. like you said, it was a very competitive division. And, and the Gremlins, that Gremlins team won the A division 7-3 to three over the Golden Knights black team. So, uh, who got the MVP, Greg, in the 8U divisions? So, the 8U AA uh, MVP was Cody Hoffman, and the 8U A MVP was Colton uh, Bellawald. There you go. So, uh, congrats to those guys. Now, Griffin, do those IRHL teams, Dan Costanza's Golden Knights, do they practice over at you guys' rank? Yeah, they uh, they practice at both, actually, but I've seen them practice a few times because I normally work the rental on Saturday mornings. So I've seen them practice. All right. Some of those kids could probably teach us something, right? Teach us <laughs> 100%. So now the 10U division was a 16 division. We had three teams from Farm Tough, IRHL, Golden Knights, the STL Car Shield Blast brought two squads, they're orange and black. And um, in this one here, the Farm Tough Roosters, uh, they were a pretty darn good team. And when I watched that team play, there were three kids. You talk about kids standing out. There were three kids on that team that really stood out to me in the one game I watched early in the morning. Um, Braden March, uh, Keaton uh, Kozlowskis, and Ian Massart. Um, I probably mispronounced all three of their names but I just knew him as 27, 10 to 97 watching them and great players, great skating ability, closing gaps out there, Greg, and just their awareness on the rink, I thought was second level. And I, I think Braden and Keaton both tie with 12 points and three games in the round Robin, pretty impressive stuff. And those guys went on to win a crazy game against Palma eight to seven double a game. You remember that great game game, Greg? Yeah, no. So going back to those guys, I mean, they were they were a fun fun group to watch. I mean, they were weaving down the rink, drop passes, back doors. I mean, it was really fun to watch. But yeah, that final game, uh, Farm Tough ended up scoring at the end. 
um, with like seven seconds left, 10 seconds left, something like that. I'm sure you have the score sheet in front of you, but yeah, I, uh, I remember watching that game and it was a, actually a pretty crazy ending. Like the IRHL had a like wide open net and the goalie made a nice thick save and the play yeah. went right the other way. And some kid ended up on a breakaway and scored with, like you said, I think seven seconds left and the building yeah. exploded. Yeah. yeah Katie, those... number, number 10, uh, Keaton, number 10. Um, I'm assuming he got MVP of the game, Greg, but he had, uh, I think five goals in that game in the eight to seven win number 10, which I think funny yeah. enough was, I think Peter Dale's old number. So he may say, Hey, I say number 10 for my special player. He's going to wear that one. Um, but, uh, yeah, all three of those guys really impressed me. And actually the goalie was pretty well during the, did pretty well during the round Robin, but eight to seven. And I love those scores. You look at it, it's one, nothing, one, one, two, one, two, two, three, two, four, back and forth. It's not like a blowout. Um, so um, great job by both teams. And uh, it was one of those games where it's a shame somebody had to lose, but in the end, Farm Tough wins uh, eight to seven with the Roosters. Yep, that was definitely a fun one. A lot of parents in the bar during that game going crazy, banging on the glass. So there was a lot of excitement during that one, for sure. And that was a double A. And then the 10A, uh, it split again. And uh, in this one, St. Louis Car Shield Blast Black. Uh, Big win, ten to two over the rabbits. Yeah, the black the glass black team. You know they were pretty good. It's so tough sometimes, Tim. You know there's a lot of tweener teams. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and that's why at State Wars it's great. We have the three divisions, and uh, you know at, at the summer event. But it's tough when there's those tweener teams that really aren't too good for the the double A, aren't right quite there, but a little too good for the A. You know, right. so that's what makes, uh, you know, State War so special in the summertime. If you look at that STL Black team, Greg, they lost their first game to Palma 8-0. Yep. Then they beat Car Shield Black 9-1, to right? Orange. Oh, I'm sorry. That's now it's the Roosters now. Um, mm -hmm. let, me, let me look at that team exactly. Hold on a second. I want to look at Black. So the Black team, Car Shield Black, their first game, they lost 8 nothing to Palma. Then they lost 9-1 to the Roosters. But then they beat Farm Tough Llamas 8-0. And then they beat the Rabbits 10-2. <laughs> so it's yes. like you get beat, you get murdered, then you murder the other team. It was just all over the map. And that's what made that division so difficult. Um, but again, getting back yeah. to our point earlier, teams just got to keep playing and get better. You know, it, it just what it comes down to. Unfortunately, that's just the way the life, wor life works, you know. Um, Griff was going to learn real quick in this uh, business world that he's in now with sticks. You know, the Bauer guys aren't going to feel bad for him. The, uh, the warrior guys aren't, Hey, let's give that Griff a couple sales of it. Now they're going to try to squash him. So that's just how <laughs> life works. You just got to work hard and, and make the best of it. Um, the 12 U division though, was our biggest 10 team division. And same thing, you know, we had some really, we had a lot of good teams in this division. Um, and this was a division that like everyone almost signed up to play double a only had a couple teams wanting to play a, so you feel bad for those couple teams at the bottom that were just really way over their head. Um, but going into the playoffs, IRHL, Palma, Golden Knights, Black, Chicago, Maid, and JYD, the team Griffin talked about earlier, all three Illinois teams, all really strong, all went 3-0 in the round robin. And then in the playoffs, Chicago, Maid, played JYD, Greg. And, you know, those teams know each other really well. And, uh, you know, JYD – came out on top in that semifinal um, with a two to one win over Chicago made. So obviously that game could have won either way. They had to play over at Mount Prospects. So I know you didn't see that one. And yeah. then in the other one, uh, Dan Costanza's Palma black team, um, they were going to play then against uh, in, in their semifinal against Detroit border cats. So Matt Koleski's group, which was a good team also. And uh, yeah. Palma came on top eight to five, but speak of that game, Greg, I'm assuming that was a great one as well. Yeah, it was a fun one. Um, I know the Board of Cats were up by a couple early, and uh, Palma ended up coming back later on in the game and taking it to them and, and hit, uh, went going to the finals after that. But it was a competitive game. Um, Board of Cats definitely had their chances to tie it and, and, and whatnot, but Palma held strong and uh, made their way to the finals against JYD. So that was another good championship game. Yeah, I know Warner Bruckman for Border Cats, a hell of a game with four goals. And yeah. on the Palmas side, uh, I know Griff mentioned Ryan Costanza before, who's turned into a little stud like his dad used to be. Uh, <laughs> three goals, two assists, five points. 
Um, and then those guys wind up going on to play JYD in the championship. I know Coach Dan Costanza talking to him. He knew it was going to be a tough one. I mean, that JYD team, Griff, is basically a bunch of 2008s, uh, maybe some 09s or a lot of 08s. And Dan team was consistently maybe mainly 09s. So they knew they would have their hands full. But they, uh, they gave him a pretty good battle, Greg, um, in the championship. And uh, JYD just proved to be a little too strong, won five to three. Um, you know, obviously, like we said, they got a good squad. And uh, Lucas Zajac, pretty strong player on that team, took home MVP award. Yeah, it's incredible when you get to that age, right? That's when the puberty st stuff kind of starts. You know, kids are – those 08s were just a tad bigger. Um against those 09s, a lot of those 09s, you could definitely see the size difference in that. But yeah, I mean, that JYD team, they, they were fast, they could move and they could play the game. Um, and Palma actually ended up um, coming within one goal and uh, pulled the goalie, um, scored one, it was a one goal game. And then JYD came back and scored another, uh, scored another one for an empty netter. So great game all around and uh, great action and some awesome talent. Now, Griff, a lot of those kids like the JYD or the Chicago Maid or a lot of them, those ice kids, just do they really just get on the rink for roller during these tournaments or do they play more roller during the year, some of those kids? Yeah, I think they only play roller during the tournaments. I haven't seen them practice at all at our rink, at least. They may have they may have had a few practices at Mount Prospect, but none that none that I know of. That's pretty amazing how good they are. Imagine if they played more more roller, how good they'd be on the wheels for the, the little that they play, and hopefully they'll be out of state wars as well. They're uh, they're pretty impressive on the wheels for how 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 much limited time they actually play. Yeah, totally. for sure. Griffin's on the on the rink more hours in a day, Greg, than those guys were on the last year. <laughs> Very true. Let's skip up to 14U. So 14U is a smaller four-team division. 12UA, Tim. Oh, did I not okay, do 12UA? Yep. Okay, yeah, 12UA. So the, warm top yeah, so four the 12U six. split. And then the, and the A side of that there, um, we had the, uh, the Palma White team and Farm Tough Horses. So let's look at that championship game here. And uh, Farm Tough. Horses five to two win over the Beta Golden Knights White. Yep, and uh, Ben Cool ended up getting the MVP honors for that one. So. Yeah, Ben's a good player. I know that Farm Tough Horse is great. They had a really good semifinal with uh, the uh, Rink Rat Warriors, another pretty strong Illinois team. That's yeah. uh, they got a, a good, good team there. Mark Sobecki, Mark Sobecki, another big supporter of ours, got those kids out. His son Peyton's a good player, and. Um, you know, they got within one, but Farm Tough had pulled ahead a little bit and just ran out of time. Yep. So let's move on here to the 14U. And here, like I said, it was a four-team division. And I know that the Farm Tough Ducks team wound up playing the Palma Golden Knights in the final. It was a 4-2 win by the Golden Knights. Yep, that 14U that uh, Golden Knights seems very good. Um, goalie was huge, big guy, um, three lights out, and Sammy Smith ended up getting the MVP honors for that game. So. And Adrian Wisniewski is a pretty good stud for that Illinois team as well, Greg. Yeah, I mean, for me, over the weekend, he was the, the player who impressed me the most. Um, just his skating alone, like he was just such a strong skater. And it seemed like he could do kind of really whatever he wanted in that division. Um, you know, not a lot of those kids, I, I feel like they're not on their, their wheels as much, but his stride and his cutting and his ability to play offense and defense was just remarkable compared to a lot of the other kids in the division and on his team. I mean, he, just as, like I said, his skating ability is what put him aside from, by, you know, from anyone else. So, do you know him, really Do you know Adrian? Yeah, he played on my eighth new team. Wow. Okay. He's a super smart player too. Like I'd I'd say he's smart for his 14 year division, but he's also like one of our smartest players on 18 U as well. Wow. That's pretty yeah, impressive. Super high roller hockey IQ. He definitely like understands the breakout better than most do. And his mom, you? we know his mom there. She had the schedule highlighted, Greg, and it was like I think they were at the rink as much as we were between all the games that they had going on. Yeah, she's like, oh, I, we live pretty close. We go back for naps. 
And then we fast forward to the 16U, 16 division, Farm Tough, Car Shield Blast, Detroit Junior Dragons from Michigan. Our buddy Steve Kramer brought those guys out. Palma yep. Golden Knights, another Farm Tough squad, and STL Chaos. Ziggy Ziegler, Double Z, brought those guys out, his organization. So the Farm Tough Cows were the only undefeated team there, 3-0 and um, in the round robin. And then going into the playoffs, you know, obviously strong team. They went out and blasted the blast, 8 nothing in the championship. Um, you don't see too many 8-0 finals, but that Farm Tough Cows team, holy cow. Yeah, I don't think <laughs> – not only they let up a goal in uh, one of the divisions, pretty remarkable. But yeah, I mean the Blast team, they were short guys. Um, one player left before the finals, couldn't stay, so they were short as it was. But I feel like come summertime, I think there's going to be a, good, a very good St. Louis team in that division. Um, mm -hmm. You know, fours. So I think they'll be able to give them give them a better game for sure. Yeah, I mean Josh Little five points in that game. Tyler Dale four. Nolan Lorenz, too. I mean, that, that's just a strong squad right there. And then you got Cam Reagan and Ned, who doesn't let in too many easy ones. Um, but, yeah, you're right. I think that 04 division, you always have a, a strong California 04 team, Missouri, Michigan. Um, there'll be some tests for those Wisconsin boys for sure um, in the 04. Yeah. But that was the uh, double the A division. Um, yeah, Cam Reagan ended up getting MVP for that. Cam Reagan did? Yep. All right. And that was only one division, I think, for 16s. And then uh, did they split Greg into single A or no? Nope. Nope, right? Okay. And then in 18U, we had a five-team division, Farm Tough, Griff Hockey, FCG, Gremlins, Detroit Border Cats, and STL Chaos. Farm Tough went 4-0. Griff Hockey went 3-1. And, and uh, fast forward to the playoffs there. And um, Farm Tough played Griff hockey like Griff mentioned earlier in the championship and uh, game a little, uh, a little spanky spank 10 to two Griff. What's up with that? Well, we had a pretty good close game the first time, but they just knew we were going to play a box as we played in the first game and this rink's a bit bigger. So they just found all like the holes in our box and get, got a lot of easy scoring chances and just took us down pretty good. <laughs> yeah, those are the games where if I want to see the goals I don't care about the Greg, Greg knows how I think I don't care about the six goals against chaos I want to see some goals against farm tough yeah, it, was, it was tough couldn't give <laughs> any chances <laughs> oh, they was... back check hard too oh, it's yeah, a good squad. A tough and you guys had a short bench so pretty tiring for you yeah and me and our goalie Chase Christopher both had back to back games too uh, well, how old are you? 17. Oh, 17. You don't get tired. Seven. Yeah, 17, you don't get tired. I got Matt Koleski calling right now. He's got to know it's his podcast time here. Come on, Matt. Know yeah, what's why don't going you pick up and let him know, Tim? What? Why don't you pick up and let him know? Hey, Matt. Now oh, he hung up. All right. <laughs> so. Junior division, another division Griffin was involved with. STL Chaos finished three and zero. Connex Rage Cats two and one. Griff Hockey one and two, and Chicago Drive zero and three. Um, Connex Rage Cats were pretty deep team there. Griff, um, some big names: Cal Kafuk from Michigan, who won the MVP at the Palm Pro Division last summer, playing with Black Ice. Uh, Hunter Tillotson, Kevin Mattis, Carter Bulo. I mean, Andrew Height. I mean, some big names on that team: Chucky Robinson in goal. It's a pretty tough team to play against. Um, you guys played them in the semifinals first. They beat up on you guys a little bit, six to one. And then uh, in the championship, they had a great game, Greg, who STL Chaos had beaten the Rage Cats two nothing in the round robin. They yeah. got the revenge when it counted, winning the game four to three. Yeah, two good teams. The Chaos team played awesome uh, throughout the whole weekend and uh, uh, just fell a little short in the finals. Um, that Rage Cats team's probably a little more experienced, I think, in the big games. You know, they're, they're a little older, I think. Um, and, uh, you know, like I said, like, you know, you have Cal Kapook, who got MVP last summer um, in, in the Palma Pro. So, I mean, having a guy like that doesn't hurt. But uh, right. their team is pretty deep, and uh, they scored when they had their chances. So, 
Um, I kind of knew it was coming. I kind of kind of thought that they'd pull one out at the end um, just because of their roster. But uh, chaos, and those guys could play. They're going to be a real good team this summer at State Wars. Yeah, I was real impressed. I mean, not that it was a big shock to him, but Chase Bradley, um, you know, drafted by the, uh, by the Red Wings, um, going to UConn this year, playing with that team. I thought the Chase, you know, he really impressed me watching him this weekend. You know, Parker Wink- Winkleman, um, you know, great player, scored a bunch of goals in that tournament. Nathan Duran, Sean Maud, I mean, Kenny Gibson. I mean, they had some good players out there playing. Yeah, they did. And I uh, was pretty impressed with them. I enjoyed watching those two teams play each other. Yeah, they battled. And your goalie, uh, Christopher Griffin, he played awesome this weekend. He had some tournament. Yeah, it was unreal for us. Yeah. He yeah, was- he'll, he'll be one of my two goalies for the futures uh, Palma Pro team this year, Chase Christopher. I think, he, I think he earned it this weekend, Griff. What do you think? 100%. He was way better than I thought. I knew he was good. I didn't think, I didn't think he'd be that good. Right. Yeah. How many yeah, shots yeah. do you think He's not oh. used to having such porous defense facing all those shots. That's the problem. <laughs> I'd say like 30, 40 a game. <laughs> all right. That's, uh, that's <laughs> that. And let's move on to that. We had a really big senior division, a 20 team division, Greg, which was like basically potluck where you fall in this one. And we had three teams after three games, tour country, puck, Missouri, infamous from Michigan. And the both finished three and oh, and the tour country puck blue team with two Oh and one. And, uh, Tough battles all around there. Got to the playoffs with that one. And um, it could be anyone's game, of course, you know, when you're dealing with all those rounds of playoffs. You know, some teams had to play three games. In the end, the last team standing, let's look at both divisions here, Greg. Um, So you had first in the single A side of things, the Missouri Gremlins wound up defeating the Ryanquist Express from Ohio three to two in the championship. Yeah, it's pretty funny. One of the guys on on uh, Reinquist left his skates over at Mount Prospect. I guess they had the last game of the night over there of the day on Sunday before their their final. And uh, he forgot his skates in Mount Prospect. I guess he was taking a shower in, in another side of the rink, and he left his skates over there. So they tr- he tried getting skates later in the day, and the building was closed. Oh, jeez. You know how those city places are, you know, the uh, park districts. They close them. See you later. You know, you can't even really call anyone. Yeah. If their shift's over at five o'clock, they lock the door at four fifty nine. you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So poor guy couldn't play in, in the final. No, that stinks. Yeah. Who got MVP in the senior A, Greg? Senior A uh, MVP was Ricky Giannino from the Gremlins. Um, oh, former sniper Long Island kid. Yeah. Uh, goaltender. There you go, Ricky. Yeah. Move out to st louis when he went to lindenwood and ended up uh staying out there with his with his lady so good to see him and uh he's gotten so so good over the years um so yeah i mean guy like him you know he was never on the best teams growing up and another example of a guy who's worked so hard and he's pretty pretty lights out in that so good for him happy for him i played him in the senior semifinal, and i just couldn't find out where to score in him i was shooting at what well, looked to be wide open, and he kept robbing me. <laughs> I couldn't find a way to score. So then you got to get a yeah, movement, I guess. He's a good goalie. You know, then in the uh, the double A portion there, so the top four teams went to double A. Um, infamous um, taking on Rampage. Now the Rampage guys, Greg. Funny story about the Rampage. So they did really well in the round robin, and then they had come up to me and asked about, hey, is there any way we could switch with someone and maybe play in the A division because we think we're too not good enough for the double A? And I'm like, dude, don't sell yourself short. You guys are doing pretty well. And they wound up going all the way to the championship in the double A. Um, you know, they won their semifinal. And then uh, they played Infamous, who was a little bit notched above everybody else there. But they gave him a game, and it was a 6-2 championship. Um, infamous taking down uh, Rampage and the Michigan boys winning it. Yeah, and I, I think that Country Puck would have given them – a great game in the final if they would have gotten past the gremlins i thought country puck was very good so i think the final with them would have been really intense but hats off to rampage i mean those guys wanted to play a right and they ended up you know in that double a final so they played awesome yeah out of a 20 team division wound up in the top two is pretty impressive so it's what you never know right i mean uh so but yeah who got up was it was brad bernie get mvp in that one greg yep brad bernie yeah. Yep. MVP. Awesome. 
That's great. You know, those, those big divisions, and we talk about the big division. So, Griff, our senior A, B division, which is always the biggest at State Wars, and I always say the same thing. Even though pro is the strongest division, the senior A, B is the toughest division in the entire tournament to win. Um, it, we could have up to 50, 60 teams in that division. We already have about 40 teams registered already for that division. So it's going to be a crazy one again. Already? Yeah, and the A, B. So basically everyone plays three games and then everyone makes the playoffs. Top half go to A, the bottom half go to B. And then you can wind up playing like four or five playoff games to go the whole way, which come that, that last day of the division, you can be playing three or four games. Um, it gets pretty tiring for these old guys. Yeah, it's a long day for them. So that was the senior division. And then we also had a 35 and over division. We had a four team division. We actually had three teams. Division, by the way. What's that? Very competitive division. Yeah, for sure. We had three teams from Missouri. You know, Missouri, I think we have about nine or 10, 35 and over teams already signed up for State Wars from Missouri. Um, guys all turning that age now, love the game. The Reapers, Car Shield Blast, and Gremlins were all there. And then Chicago Drive, our buddy, some of our buddies from Illinois, Pete Messina, uh, and uh, some of the guys, Chicago Drive, they were two and Rob one in the Kluzek. round robin. Griffin's the, dad. Yeah, Rob. Rob Kluzek played on that team when he wasn't coaching Griff, but they went two and one in the round Robin. They had actually uh, lost a game to the gremlins four to two in the round Robin. And uh, they got going a little bit and then uh, they made it to the championship against the car shield blast. And our buddy Pete Messina, one of the rookies in 35 and over who we were busting his chops the first night that he didn't look like uh, he was going to be too good this weekend. He hadn't played in a while in a tournament. It's been years. He said, he, uh, you know, Petey, he loves to, he loves to score goals. He loves a big game. There was a crowd there, I'm sure around the bar and uh local hero. He came through scoring four goals, Griff, four for four to win the game four to three and take on MVP honors. Uh, Pete Messina uh, and our buddy Nick from the rink there had a great tournament also assisted on a couple of those. Yeah. Pete, Pete actually, you know, he had a slow start. Let's be honest. He had a slow start to the tournament, but he uh, ended up, up scoring four goals in that championship game for uh for the win for the for the uh chicago drive so yeah pete was even posting pictures his you know highlight reels <laughs> all over social media pete so he, he was excited he, he had a good time he had that nice toe drag goal in the championship yeah i think your mom filmed your mom was upstairs filming you a lot this weekend she filmed pete a little bit and sent him some videos yeah she did <laughs> i have to hire her to do some video work for state wars this summer she does a pretty good job with that think you should <laughs> for sure <laughs> all right so that's, that's the midwest recap. wars recap there yeah so griff before we go i got a couple of questions for you um you know who's your favorite pro player pro roller hockey player uh overall i'd say probably cody keller but to watch definitely tyler spezia okay how about, you know, maybe a team this year that you're really looking forward to watching, um, you know, a team that maybe picked up some guys or a young team that you're like, wow, these guys definitely are in the mix to, to win. Well, that Mars played Lions team, they got a lot of new pickups. So I'm inter interested to see how they do. Palma, as usual, has a bunch of offseason pickups. So interested to see how those guys will mix and flow. Snipers. You guys said you're getting all, a lot of your players back. That'll be a fun team to watch. A lot of goal scorers. Yeah, there's, a lot of rumors, there's a lot of rumors that uh, Stanley Cup back-to-back -back winner Pat Maroon might be on Mars Blade in the Palma Pro this year at State Wars. So if that happens, his hometown there, Greg, that Mars Blade team, which to me is always, you know, the former Alkali team is always on that cusp that could win it. That might be the, uh, the extra push they need. What do you think, Griff? Yeah, I think I, I might have just been bad luck. So, <laughs> they might have replaced you with, with, with uh, the big rig. Without me, I think they might win now. Be better without me. <laughs> what do you mean? You're not going to be part of the team? Uh, not sure. Probably not. All right. Well, we'll see when summer, when summer comes around. We'll, we'll see where you are. It's pretty exciting, Greg, when you think of the Palma Pro. You know, Max Comtois, who... Uh, led the Anaheim Ducks in scoring this year with the, for the NHL, for the Ducks, um, is going to be on the roster, it looks like, for the Palma Beta Golden Knights. 
And if Patty Maroon plays a Mars Blade, we could have two current NHL players playing in the division, which is pretty impressive stuff. And uh, definitely exciting news for a lot of our fans. will be checking it out. Yeah, it's going to be awesome to see. And I, I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of good players coming out of the woodworks for this one because guys are just amped to play and that they want a taste of the Palm Pro division. So it's going to be awesome. And we always have great crowds, you know, in St. Louis, um, a lot of locals and just, I just love the game. So, and Tim, your phone's blowing up today. This phone doesn't ring all day. And then we get on the podcast and uh, we had Koleski calling. Now we have Ross Detman calling, um, probably talking about some photos, you know, Guy's pretty passionate, Greg. He he could talk to you for an hour about a photo. Like he, how Griff is with his sticks and stuff is Ross with the with the camera. He just takes a lot of pride in it, and it shows in his art. <laughs> Griff, any last words? Any uh, you know comments or anything leading up to State Wars this summer? Uh, uh, I'm excited for State Wars, of course. But I don't besides that, I don't think I have any. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it was awesome, man. Tim, you got anything for Griff before he? Uh... Before we sign out here. Hey, Griff, I want you to run down from last year back as far as you can, the locations of state war starting in 2020. So 2020 Fort Wayne, 2019 Fort Wayne, 2018 Missouri, 2017 Michigan, 2016 Fort Wayne, 2015 Missouri, 2014 Fort Wayne, 2013 Illinois, 2012 Missouri, 2011 Cincinnati, 2010 Illinois, 2009 Cincinnati, and then that's all I got. Besides the first three, I know they were in Illinois somewhere. Yeah, so you're almost there. So yeah, 2009 Cincinnati, 2008 was also in Cincinnati, and then 07, 06, 05 were in Bensonville, Illinois, at the edge, and that's and that's where it started. So uh, good job there, bud. Thank you. Not bad, Griff. You're only two years old when that first one started, so I don't expect you to know that first one. <laughs> Definitely Impressive. had no idea. Well, <laughs> the first ones I knew, but like the in between ones, I had no idea. Right, right, right. Now you definitely got a mind for the game, and uh, definitely we'll we'll think of some other questions next time we have you on to stump you some more. I'm glad I got you. It shows you how selfless he is, Greg. He knows everything about everyone else's stats. Didn't know his own first goal score who it was against. <laughs> he had it down to two teams, but. He got it wrong, so uh, I was glad I was able to stump him on one about himself. And he corrected us with uh, the Jesse Petito stats. So, Yep. All right, Griff. Well, thanks for coming on, buddy. Uh, always a pleasure hanging out with you last weekend. You were a big help, you and your family, so thanks for everything you do. And uh, we'll see you uh, soon out in uh, St. Peter's, Missouri. All right, bud? Sounds good. Thanks. Good luck with the Griff stick. Thank you. All right, that was Griffin Kluzak, otherwise known as Griff, behind the Griff Hockey and the Griff Hockey Stick. Um, I got to be honest, Greg, when I first heard he was doing a stick, I was expecting to go there and just seeing the typical, you know, we've heard of a million people doing sticks. They always weigh a ton. They have no feel to them. Um, he handed me that stick, and at first it was a righty. I had to wait for him to bring me a lefty the next day. But I, right away I was like, it feels pretty good. And then you grabbed it, you were like, this feels really good. And you wanted to buy one. And Matt Koleski came over. We showed it. he was going to buy a couple and uh, he didn't have my, uh, the curve or the flex I needed, but or I would have bought one off the guy, but uh, definitely had a pretty good, and he went out and shot with it a little bit, pretty good feel, huh? Yeah. I was messing around with it. I liked it. I had a good feel. You know, honestly, uh, I'm not really my, my stiffness, but I'll take it. You know, it is what it is. So I think I'm going to end up buying one from Griff. Yeah, the, the question for him is going to be his durability, right? That's what it's going to come down to. That's where I think these other sticks, they've been tested so much. They have that. Definitely has the yep. feel or whatnot, and we'll see how the durability, as long as durability is there, I don't see why people mm. wouldn't be buying them, uh, especially he's got a, a little bit of cheaper price point than some of the bigger names sticks out there. Um, but definitely impressive of Griffin at his age to be just doing that, taking initiative, finding a factory overseas, getting a stick built, spending his own money to do it, putting the time in. And uh, there's not too many guys that are more passionate about roller hockey than uh, Griffin Kluzak. No, well, he's he's a trivia master. So I, I, obviously he, he follows the sport pretty closely and he's got a great following. So I think he'll be selling a lot of those sticks. Yeah, I mean, definitely. He's a, he's a, he's a household name for sure. Um, you, you mentioned the name, I think it's 
it's like saying Madonna or Prince. You say Griff, and people just know who you're talking about in roller hockey. Not too many Griffins in the sport of roller hockey. You kind of know who you're talking about when you just say the name Griffin. Um, it's, your daughter just uh, walked in, and she's rolling her eyes at you for that comment. Oh, uh, okay. Well, she doesn't <laughs> know. I don't think she knows who Madonna or Prince is anyway, so um, she's too young for that. So, yeah, so, you know, great stuff. Obviously, great tournament at Midwest Wars uh, last weekend. Again, a big thank you to all our supporters out there um, who, you know, help make that tournament what it is. It's a, it's a great tournament. It's a pain in the neck when we have it at two separate one rink facilities. That's what makes it so hard for scheduling and whatnot. But I think the guy that did the schedule for that did a great job of, of, of working it out between both ranks best he could. So uh, that worked out for the most part. Um, but, you know, definitely is definitely tough for Greg for us staff wise when we're separated in two different places. Yeah, it's a long weekend, but I felt like, you know, the, uh, <clears throat> the programs there, you know, Farm Tufts and IRHL um, team, you know, uh, organization with multiple teams, they did a good job of filling spots with assistant coaches and stuff. So, you know, teams like that, you always have to <clears throat> think about that, you know, going into a tournament, you know, who's going to fill in where and help out and. I felt like they did, they did a good job with that. So, yeah, you definitely need assistant coaches these days if you want to have a whole organization, right? I mean, it's impossible. I mean, I know what it was yeah. like at one time we had a million sniper teams would be at an arch tournament or a tours tournament and running rink to rink to rink, and it's impossible. Um, so, you definitely need some good uh, assistant coaches, or just even more importantly, get more head coaches involved who are gonna, you know, help out and and be on different rinks, right? Oh, totally, totally helps out big time. All right. Well, that's uh, that's our wrap up today. So that was our Midwest Wars rewind, like we said. Um, you know, thank you to Griffin Kluzak for taking the time today to be on here with us. Um, always great having him on. And, uh, you know, we'll be back next week where we're going to be covering the uh, Winter Wars West event. Yeah, looking forward to it. State Wars Hockey Podcast, number 51, calling it a wrap, and we'll see you guys next week. Glass Half Full Productions. Take care.